Let's start with the truth most gardeners eventually face. Traditional composting sounds great in theory, but in practice, it often fails. You spend weeks turning, watering, and balancing that perfect green to brown ratio, only to end up with a pile that smells off, dries out, or takes months longer than promised. It's frustrating, but here's the key insight. It's not your fault. The very system most of us were taught to use fights against how decomposition actually happens in nature. Once you see how nature breaks down organic matter efficiently, quietly, and without all the heavy labor, you'll understand why it's time to stop managing your compost and start collaborating with biology instead. The problem with hot composting is that it burns energy instead of building soil. Traditional composting is based on heat. You pile up greens and browns, aim for a temperature between 55 and 65 degrees Celsius, and then keep turning it to maintain oxygen. That heat is supposed to mean success, a sign that microbes are working fast, but fast isn't always good. In fact, it's part of the problem. High heat burns off the very compounds your soil needs most. Carbon escapes as carbon dioxide, nitrogen is lost as ammonia, and microbial diversity crashes because only heat-loving bacteria can survive. The result is a pile that breaks down quickly but produces low-stability compost, material that looks done but still leaches nutrients or goes sour in the soil. And nature never does this. You'll never find a forest hot pile. Instead, you'll find cool, slow, and biologically rich decomposition happening layer by layer, guided by fungi, bacteria, and soil fauna working in balance. If you take a handful of forest soil and smell it, you'll notice that deep, earthy aroma. That's humus, the end product of a biological relay race. First, bacteria start the job by breaking down sugars and soft tissues. Then, fungi move in to handle cellulose and lignin. Finally, actinomycetes and microfauna, well, they refine what's left into stable organic matter. Traditional composting disrupts this process by, you know, forcing everything to happen at once. When you turn your pile, you destroy fungal networks, expose microbes to ultraviolet light, and honestly reset the entire biological succession. That's why your compost can stall or even start to smell. It's stuck in an early bacterial phase that, well, never matures. Nature's method, on the other hand, allows each stage to play out fully. In forest systems, organic material falls to the ground, stays moist, and decomposes slowly under a stable environment. There's no heat spike, no constant mixing, just a consistent habitat for biology to thrive. That's the model serious gardeners should be replicating at home. The first step to doing it nature's way is to stop chasing heat. If you want your compost to behave like the forest floor, you need to stop treating it like a furnace. So instead of you know, trying to cook organic matter, what you really want is to culture biology. And, well, that all starts with getting the moisture, oxygen and carbon balance just right. Build your pile in layers, but make sure to keep it loose and airy rather than compacted. A simple structure that works pretty well is a 20 centimeter layer of coarse sticks or prunings at the bottom for airflow. Then you just alternate layers of nitrogen-rich materials like fresh greens, manure or food scraps and carbon-rich materials such as dry leaves, straw or shredded cardboard. The ratio doesn't need to be exact but aim for roughly 30 parts carbon to one part nitrogen. The key is texture, make sure air can move freely through the pile. Then, instead of turning it every week, let it breathe on its own. Keep it moist, you know, like a wrung-out sponge. If it starts to dry, just mist it lightly. 
if it smells anaerobic, poke holes or insert perforated PVC pipes to help airflow. This is passive aeration, the way nature does it. Here's the part traditional composting misses entirely. Fungi are the true builders of humus. They don't thrive in hot, disturbed piles. They need stable moisture, moderate temperature, and access to woody carbon. When they get those conditions, they weave their mycelial threads through the pile, breaking down tough materials like bark and stems and binding everything into dark, crumbly aggregates. You can help fungi colonize your compost by adding a small layer of soil-finished compost or even leaf mold between layers that inoculates the pile with a living microbial community. Another great trick mix in a small amount of biochar, about 10% of the pile's volume. It provides a permanent home for microbes and stabilizes nutrients, keeping nitrogen from leaching away. Over time, you'll start to see fine white strands running through your compost. That's fungal mycelium, and it's the best sign you're on the right track. Uh, what we call cold composting or cold fermentation is really just decomposition guided by balance, not heat. Now, cold composting, it's a bit of a slower process, taking about three to six months instead of just a few weeks. But, you know, what you get at the end isn't merely broken down waste. What you end up with is stable humus. It's packed with uh, microbial diversity, organic acids and carbon compounds that, well, they bind nutrients in the soil. So, to create your own cold ferment compost system, you'll want to start small. A one by one meter pile is just ideal. Layer it as we described earlier, and be sure to moisten each layer as you build. Then cover the top with a breathable tarp or straw. This will keep the rain out while maintaining the necessary humidity. Don't turn it, just let it mature. Check occasionally to ensure it stays damp, but not wet. In two to three months, you'll notice the material shrinking and darkening. By month six, you'll have cool, sweet-smelling compost that won't reheat or clump when exposed to moisture. That's living humus, and it's ready for your beds. For those in hot or dry climates, you might want to consider setting up your pile under shade or next to a water source just to prevent dehydration. A weekly sprinkle with diluted compost extract or EM that's effective microorganisms, solution at a 1 to 20 ratio with water can really speed up microbial colonization naturally. So, no need for commercial starters. Once your cold compost is ready, it's best to apply it as a surface layer rather than mixing it deep. This approach actually mimics the natural cycle, where organic matter decomposes from the top down. A two to three centimeter layer spread evenly across the bed will gradually integrate as worms and microbes pull it into the soil. You'll notice the surface staying moist for longer, crusting less, and developing that dark coffee-like texture that true living soils have. Within just one growing season, soil treated this way begins to regulate itself, better nutrient retention, fewer compaction problems, and, well, visible root growth. That's what happens when you stop forcing decomposition and let the microbial web rebuild itself. The takeaway, slow living compost outperforms fast compost every time. Nature doesn't hurry, but it never fails. The forest floor doesn't need thermometers or turning forks because it's perfectly balanced. When you switch from hot composting to natural decomposition, you stop wasting energy and start producing something far more valuable, living humus that actually improves your soil for the long haul. 
So next time you're tempted to chase heat, remember, the goal isn't speed, it's stability, biology and balance. Let the microbes, fungi and worms do their work without interference, and your compost will transform itself from a pile of scraps into the foundation of soil health. If you found this guide helpful, make sure to subscribe to Hydrohaven and share it with fellow growers who are ready to ditch the shovel and trust biology. Because when it comes to building fertile soil, the smartest move is to let nature do what it's already perfected.